Good evening and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. How's your day been? Drop me a little line. Let, drop me a message on one of our social medias and just let me know how things are going for you and how your day is. And most importantly, where in the world you're listening to the show. Welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay. Thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Check out our Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels, please. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show and it would be brilliant if you could follow us. We've got a supporter page. That's at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And, uh, well, with it being a Wednesday, it does, of course, mean that we are just about to check out another episode of Rocky Jordan. This one was first broadcast on the 24th of April, 1949. It's called Consignment for Naples. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, Consignment for Naples. I should have known things were too nice and quiet. It was in the heat of the day, and my cafe tambourine was almost deserted. The cash register was as silent as the sphinx out of tourist season, so I went back to my office to get some paperwork done. I just buried my nose in a bunch of figures when the next thing I knew, a dapper Egyptian in British clothes and a red fez popped in the office door. He handed me an elaborately embossed card, sat down, snapped open his briefcase, and came out with a fistful of papers. Hamoud Hassan, Mr. Jordan. Great Nile Insurance Company, Cairo. Yes, so I read. Well, I got lots of insurance, Mr. Hassan. Yes, that is quite obvious, Mr. Jordan. And why waste your time? If you please, my call is in regard to a certain cargo which you recently consigned to Naples by way of the Cairo Air Freight Lines. It was insured through my company. What about it? Mr. Jordan, do you not know that the plane carrying your cargo crashed near El Alamein two days ago? Come to think about it, I did read about a plane crash, but I didn't connect it up. Your cargo was completely destroyed by fire. So that's it. Hardly worth your bother, Mr. Hassan. Didn't amount to much. That is a matter of opinion. Sort of a thank you gift I was sending to a friend in Naples. Some cases of brandy dates. Mr. Jordan, what was in the cases is not our affair. My company has thoroughly reviewed the situation and decided to pay you in full for the loss. I have the check here. Ah, You are on the job. We prefer to have the matter settled quickly. Now, hey, wait a minute. This check's made out for 500 pounds, $2,000. The full amount of the coverage. But I only shipped five cases. 150 cases, Mr. Jordan, insured for 500 pounds. <laughs> you need a bookkeeper. If you please, the figures are quite clear. Will you accept the check, Mr. Jordan? Yeah, if that's the way you want it. Very well. Now, if you will sign these papers. Sure, anything to please. Uh, here and... Uh, uh-huh. Ah. Ah, what next, Mr. Hassan? That will be all. Here is your check. Thank you. Uh, and now, Mr. Jordan. Yeah? Understand, I speak only for myself when I say that this has been the most disgusting affair in my experience. What? Just what are you talking about? I will about? not discuss it. I wish only to say that I think you are a low, contemptible, despicable dog. Good day, Mr. Jordan. His remarks had a subtle edge that left me wondering. And suddenly it occurred to me that this could well be the start of a big deal. I hadn't shipped 150 cases, only five. And they were insured for exactly $20. So right there, I decided to stop staring at the check in my hand and find out what the bank thought about it. I was just going to pick up the phone when I saw her in the door. American, 1949 model. Just the right lines from her smart shoes to the little feather in her hat. I liked everything about her, especially her brown eyes. 
but they didn't return the compliment. Mr. Jordan? Yeah. So, you are Mr. Jordan. That's me, lady. You must think you're very clever. Yeah, I've always gotten along. Don't bother to hide the check, Mr. Jordan. I saw him give it to you. You got big eyes, lady. Look, uh, suppose we complete the introductions. Helga. Anne Helga. Just what do you want, Miss Helga? I'm not asking for anything. I could hardly expect one decent thing from you. People can go on starving, but as long as you get your few filthy dollars, you wouldn't care. You ever try talking sense? I never made more sense in my life. I only wish I could find words to express how much I despise you. I like you, too. Mr. Jordan, I just want you to know that it won't be as easy as you think. I'm not giving up yet. Anything else? No, that's all. Just remember what I said. Goodbye. Not just yet, lady. Mr. Jordan, let me go. Uh, sit down and clear this up. Start from the beginning, Miss Helga. What's it all about? You will let me out of here. No. Oh, yeah. You put up a good argument, Miss Helga. It takes a gun to convince your kind, doesn't it, Mr. Jordan? Uh, Twenty-two. Just your size. It can kill. Now may I go, Mr. Jordan? Sure, run right along. But I'm still wondering why the visit. I just had to tell you to your face how much I loathed you. Anne Helga backed out into the cafe, stuffed the gun in her bag, stumbled against a table, then turned and ran toward the door. When everybody starts hating me that much, I get curious. So I decided to follow along. I had my eye on the girl, so I didn't see the big fellow getting up from a table until it was too late. Oh, no. Hey, what's it, sir? You're the one man in the whole place, and you have to get in my way. Is that the way you treat your customers, okay, sir? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Here, drop this. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bad cold, you know. Don't stand too close. And they say bourbon helps. Yeah, I've been trying that. When I finally got to the front door, the street was deserted. Ann Helga was gone. The big guy I'd bumped moved past me and out into the street, walking fast. In spite of the heat, he was wearing a heavy muffler around his neck. I watched him round the corner, and again I realized I was holding that check in midair. So right then I made tracks for the bank. By that time, I almost expected the teller behind the window to bite my head off. Well, 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 good afternoon, Mr. Jordan. How's that? I say good afternoon. You don't hate me, Archie? Oh, I say, why should I, old boy? Uh, what can I do for you? Oh, yeah, why don't you take a look at this check? Oh, of course, uh, that's what I'm here for, you know. And what do you make of it? A rather sizable sum. You want this all in cash, Mr. Jordan? Now, don't tell me the check's okay. Oh, most assuredly. I venture the Great Nile Insurance Company can spare a few hundred pounds. But you're sure? What about the signature? Oh, perfectly genuine. I've handled many of those these checks. I say, you you look a bit disappointed. Oh, just surprised. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, you forgot to endorse it. Well, never mind. I think I'll hold on to it for a while. Oh, but I assure you, Mr. Jordan, <laughs> our money is also genuine. Well, I'll, I'll give it a try sometime. The check was good, and that made even less sense. If somebody was promoting a new insurance racket, this was the smoothest job yet. Well, I figured the logical place to fill in some blank spaces was the office of the Cairo Air Freight Lines. So, 15 minutes later, I was talking to the man at the desk. Yeah, I remember you, Jordan. I shipped some cases of brandy dates out of here for Naples a couple of days ago. The plane crashed. I know all about it, all about it. So, what's it this time? You and the insurance company better get together. They paid me exactly 480 pounds too much for the loss. And you're complaining? A lot of people are complaining. Let's straighten it out. Look, Jordan, just leave me out of it. Okay, mister. Just as soon as you show the invoice for all that stuff with my signature. Think I haven't got it? I've been waiting for something like this. Look it over, Jordan. Just like that. 150 cases consigned to Naples, insured for 500 pounds. And there's your signature on the bottom. Hey, what is this? You know I only brought in five cases. Yeah? What about the guy that brought in the other 145? You tell me. Just a half hour before the plane took off. Said you wanted them added to your consignment. How do these figures get changed? You had it all figured out, didn't you? Instead of five cases, just put a one in front and a zero after it, and you've got 150. Fix the insurance the same way. <laughs> zero, zero after the five, and you've got 500 pounds. Saved you coming down and signing another invoice, he said. Just what did this guy look like? Big fella, gray hair, had a bad cold? No, a little ragged guy with red hair, no cold. Where do I find out some more about the plane crash? Talk to the pilot. 
He crash landed before the plane burned. He's uh he's back in Cairo. Oh, where? Get it from the office. I ain't information. The man in the office didn't like me either. But he finally told me the pilot was Andy Barker. Lived at the Marmaduke Hotel. Well, I was fast becoming Cairo's number one heel. But my number one boy on the heel parade was a little ragged fellow with red hair. Till I could dig him out, I was off to the Marmaduke Hotel to see what the pilot could tell me. The room clerk did a take when I asked for Andy Parker's room number, but he gave it to me. It took me a couple of minutes to get up a noisy elevator to the third floor and then find Barker's room. But I didn't have to knock. The door was wide open. And there in the center of the room, lying sprawled face down, was a man with a handful of rug. A whiff of Egyptian cigarette smoke turned my head to a chair in the corner. Calmly seated there was Captain Sam Sabaya, Cairo Police. Well, Jordan, your usual timely entrance. Uh, waiting for me, Sam? The room clerk is most cooperative. Come in, close the door. Is uh, this Andy Barker? It is. Why? I wanted to talk to him. Oh, you may talk to him, but I fear he, he will get no answers. You see, he... Uh, don't tell me. Now, what did you wish to talk to this man about? About the crash of his cargo plane in the desert. And your interest? Some of my stuff was on the plane. What stuff? Brandy dates. Jordan, must I be eternally patient with you? Brandy dates, indeed. That's what it was, Sam. Don't you believe me? Perhaps I do, and perhaps not. Well, let's hear your idea. Enough, Jordan. What was on the plane, or for what reason it was on its way to Naples, was not my concern. But murder it is something else. Do you think it ties up? The moment I do. What do you know of this Andy Barker? Not a thing, Sam. I never saw him before. I just got his name at the Cairo Air Freight office. Jordan, touch nothing. Oh, uh, just looking, Sam. Mm, lipstick on cigarettes in the ashtray. Powder on the floor where a compact might have dropped. Yes, I see all that. Uh, at least it clears me. Do not be too sure, Jordan. Oh, I get it, Sam. You hate me, too. My personal feelings have nothing to do with it. You may go for now, but kindly remain available oh, for... Oh, hold further... it, Sam. Get me out of the dark. What's it all about? I said that is all, Jordan. Good day. Yeah, even my best friends wouldn't tell me. So I got out, and for once I was in luck. As I stepped out of the hotel into the street, a little figure ducked away quick and scrambled down the street. He was little, ragged, with red hair. Just the guy I wanted to see. He saw me coming and stepped it up. So did I. We kept it down a crooked side street, and finally I grabbed him and slammed him against a sandstone wall. Uh, no, no, let go. What's the name, little man? It's none of your business. Uh, spit it out. Who are you? No, 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 no please. Parson. Leon Parson. Okay, Parson, you got a lot to tell me. Tell you? I think you're crazy. Murder always upsets me. Murder? I know nothing of murder, nothing. Then try this. A lot of cases consigned in my name for Naples. What was in them? Why should I know what, what? was... That help your memory? Let's have it, Parson. What'd you have put on that plane? It, it was nothing. Uh, wait, wait. Only food. I don't buy that easy. It is true. The dehydrated food, that is all. Dehydrated food? Cute little trick to get the stuff in the Italian black market, right, Parson? What difference does it make? It is not your affair. Who are you working for? Only for myself. Ah, cut it, little man. You're not the brains. No, no, stop it, Joe. Who's behind it? I... Her name is Helga. Anne Helga? Yeah, I met her before. <laughs> she was using you, Jordan. Using you very well. Until the plane crashed. Did she kill Andy Barker? What do you think? You're going to tell me, then the police. Uh, maybe I will. They know the consignment was in your name. What about it? Everybody knows the stuff was in your name. When Andy Barker let it leak out, it was black market, so who else would kill him but you, Jordan? Why, you... Yeah, yeah, hit me some more. But where you're going, you won't be able to hit anybody. For a long time. Listening to Consignment for Naples, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Every Sunday night on the Pacific Coast from 8 through 9.30, CBS brings you high adventure and thrilling mystery, designed to keep you absorbed in skillfully woven tales until the last surprising moment. Following Rocky Jordan, stay tuned for The Whistler, 
Then at nine, you'll enjoy Sam Spade and another exciting half hour. Take a voyage into mystery every Sunday night from 8 until 9.30. Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, Consignment for Naples. Naturally, I was the last to find out that my name was on a big shipment of dehydrated foods bound for the Italian black market. But when the plane carrying the stuff crashed and burned in the desert, things started happening fast. The pilot lived, but only long enough to get back to Cairo and start spilling. So somebody killed him. Well, Leon Passon told me a woman named Ann Helga was running the show, so she was the one I had to find. There are only about a million and a half people around Cairo, so I had myself a job. I spent an hour or so checking the steamship and airlines with no luck. Next, I went to the American consulate. You are correct in assuming that one Anne Helga is in Egypt. However, on November 23rd, she moved to Karnak. Her passport expires December 3rd, 1949, Mr. Jordan. That helped a lot. Next, I tried Ali Ben Maroud, one of Cairo's know-it-all for a price boys. No, Fendi. At the moment, I know of no such person by that name. However, for a nominal figure, I can produce many women who would answer her description. After a couple of more tries with the same result, I talked to my old friend Bob Hall, a reporter for the Cairo Gazette. Ann Helga. Brown hair and eyes, blue dress, no Rocky. But I know a red head that'll make you forget her. Yeah, that's the way it went. I scouted a dozen of the big hotels and was about to give up with the last one when I hit pay dirt. Not Miss Helga, but the big man with a bad cold. We'd met before, right after Ann's visit to my tambourine. I decided to play my hunch and follow the big fellow into the bar. <laughs> yeah, better not sit too close, mister. I've got a cold. Let's try some more bourbon. Huh? Oh, Mr. Jordan. You wish to see me? Yeah. Where's Ann Helga? <laughs> you must be confused. I'm Craig Norris. We met in your cafe this morning. Little accident. Sure. Convenient, wasn't it? It kept me from following her out of the place. Nothing of the kind. <laughs> Back a little farther. Germ. You're lying, Norris. Germs are no germs. I'm staying with you till I get it. Yeah. Very well. You do know, don't you? This is most embarrassing, Mr. Jordan. I'll bet it is. I, uh, I did follow a lady into your cafe. Uh, you're a man of the world, Jordan. You will understand. Yeah. I'm a... Uh, Businessman, importer, traveling away from home. Lonesome. Well, this Miss um, Helga, did you say? Anne Helga. Uh, anyhow, she's most charming. I, too, lost trace of her after she left the tambourine. You uh, a friend of hers? Uh, not exactly. I assure you I will bother her no more. In fact, I have a plane ticket for Calcutta, leaving in the morning. Uh, okay, Norris. You're straightforward, Jordan. I like you for that. How about having dinner with me? No, no, thanks. And I tell you what I will do. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> when I find Anne, I'll give her your regards. Norris had made it sound pretty convincing, so I decided to give it up as a bad job. After spending the whole day looking for the phantom lady, it was time to lay the problem in the ample lap of Captain Sam Sabaya. It was late when I got to headquarters, but Sam was there behind his desk sipping a hot cup of thick black coffee, Egyptian style. He uh, seemed to be enjoying it more than he did me. Jordan, when I'm ready to see you, I will send for you. I want you to help me find a girl, Sam. American, smooth number, name's Ann Helga. Indeed, and for what reason? She's all tied up with that plane crash. Of course, and the brandy date. Now get this, Sam. That plane was loaded with dehydrated foods for the Italian black market. Somebody managed to add them to my consignment of dates. I had nothing to do with it. Mm. Most interesting. And about Miss Helga. She's behind the whole operation. So you see why I gotta find her. Of course, Jordan. However, I fear that I have priority on this woman. Why? There is strong evidence that she shot Andy Barker. The lipstick, cigarettes, powder on the floor. He was shot with a twenty-two revolver. Oh, you'll have to do better than that. Of course, Jordan, of course. 
You know, there is a witness who saw her enter Barker's room shortly before his death. Who's the witness, Sam? A most interesting character, short and ragged with bright red hair. Named Leon Passon? Jordan, you had nothing to do with this affair, and yet you seem to know everything. Nothing I haven't told you, Sam. Indeed. First I knew about the load on that plane was when the insurance company sent me a check this morning to cover the loss. Yeah, here's the check. Have a look at it. Hmm, 500 pounds. Jordan, let me suggest that you spend the money very quickly. Why, Sam? A further investigation suggests that the plane Andy Barker crashed in the desert was carrying no cargo at all. Now the whole thing was screwy. A plane crashes with a cargo that isn't there. Leon Passon threatens to pin the pilot's killing on me, then turns it on Ann Helga. Well, from then on, Sabaya could have them both. I went back to the tambourine. Chris had closed up long ago, so I let myself in the front way. And I went back to the office, figuring to put the check in the safe. I groped around for the door and flicked on the light. You keep late hours, Mr. Jordan. And there she was, the girl I'd turned Cairo upside down trying to find, Ann Helga, with a familiar twenty-two leveled at my belt buckle. I've been waiting a long time. Well, I'm... Flattered. I think you understand, Mr. Jordan. No, I don't. That gun, Ann. This is all wrong. And why? You fixed me up good, planting that hot cargo in my name. I'm the fall guy, so why is the gun on me? It should be the other way around. I told you I wasn't giving up. Now, where's the food? I should know. Where did you store it after you took it off the plane? Stand quietly and tell me. Look, one of us is all mixed up. Why don't you just... Don't touch it... the light. <clears throat> now then, lady, drop it. No, please, I won't. Drop it. Just leave it there, Ann. Very well. Pick up the gun. Kill me with it. That would be so like you. You don't take care of yourself so good, Ann. You had a chance to shoot. I... I couldn't shoot anyone. I'm beginning to believe you. Now, give me the story right from the top. Don't you already know? No, not yet. What about the dehydrated food? Where did it come from? I, I bought it all myself. Army surplus, which had been stored since the war in Somaliland. I'd hoped to get it to Italy. They need food so badly. And why all the hocus-pocus sending it in my name? Mr. Jordan, I... Well, I'll confess that getting the food onto that plane in your name was my idea, but I was at my wit's end. Twice before I attempted to ship quantities of food through proper channels, and both times it fell into the black market. Well, you like taking chances, don't you? It might have worked, except for Leon Passon. Was he working for you? Yes. But he sold out. Perhaps to you. Uh, not me, lady. Anyhow, the pilot was bought out for a few pounds. They moved the food off the plane and back into Cairo. Where? I don't know. Were you in Andy Barker's room this afternoon? Yes. I accused him of deliberately crashing and burning the plane to cover up for the missing cargo. He was frightened and about to go to the police. Only he was killed before he had a chance. Sam Sabaya thinks you killed him. Did you? Shouldn't I be asking you that question? All right, I'll give you an answer. See this check from the insurance company? I know, for 500 pounds. What are you doing? Tearing it up. That convince you? Well, I'm not sure. There's still the missing food. Okay, let's both clean it up by taking it to the police. Very well. Now, Rocky? Let's go in. What about my gun? Oh, leave it there. Oh, by the way, uh, how'd you get in here tonight? I hid before closing time. Mm, Got to tell Chris to be more careful. Oh, just a second. And look out! <laughs> The shots came in through the door glass. I rolled Ann to the floor, and two seconds later was up looking out into the dark. The light of a passing car caught the back of a running figure halfway down the block. I told Ann to wait there for me, and for the second time that day, I was off to the races. The guy was way up ahead of me, and the dark streets swallowed him up. But a native card seller named Baragit down at the corner told me he'd seen somebody running toward the Sharia El Nar. When I got there, I flipped a paper boy a couple of piastres, and he pointed down to the docks along the Nile. He wasn't far ahead when I reached the docks. A lone riverboat was tied up in front of an old warehouse. I caught a glimpse of somebody ducking in a window. I counted ten and went in after him. The moonbeam from a window played on a stack of cases along the wall. I didn't have to look any closer to know that they were full of dehydrated foods. I kept in the dark trying to spot my little man. No! And then... No! Oh! The shout snapped me toward the next room way too fast. When I reached the door, the reception was waiting for me. The stars lit up and faded, and the familiar black curtain settled in. A 
don't know how long I was out. But when I opened my eyes, it was quiet again. A huddled figure lay two yards away, a knife still in his back. I took a quick look. It was Leon Passon. Then I noticed something else. The place was empty. Every single case of food had disappeared. And through an open door, I saw the riverboat slowly pulling away. I pulled myself up and took just a couple of steps when my foot found something on the floor. I picked it up. It was a little metal tube about two inches long. When my nose caught the aroma, I had my last answer. That got me moving. The first thing I did was find a payphone and put in a call to the tambourine. I waited a long time for an answer. Anne, where you been? I, I wasn't sure I should answer. Rocky, where are you? What's happening? Now, we'll save the details. Listen, watch your step, but meet me at the Continental Savoy Hotel as quick as you can. But, Rocky... Ah, uh, never mind. Just be there, Anne. In less than 20 minutes, I walked into the lobby of the Continental Savoy, and Anne Helga was there waiting for me. I took her elbow and pushed her onto an elevator. We got off at the fourth floor and headed down the hall. We had just rounded the corner when a familiar figure carrying a big suitcase came out of 423. He didn't get any farther. Uh, now here, now here. Uh, what's the meaning of Back this? Back inside, Norris. No, 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 stop this at once. Oh, oh, it's you again, Jordan. Yeah, a couple of old friends. I set down the suitcase. You're not going anywhere. No, no, well, what is this? Some sort of joke? Biggest joke of the year. Recognize the lady, Mr. Norris? Ann Helga. You wanted a date with her. I fixed it up. Why, oh, yeah. I... I'm not too close, Jordan. But Rocky, who is he? Craig Norris. Taking off for Calcutta. Right, Norris? Uh, yes, I was just leaving. Let's see the plane ticket. Coat pocket? Now, no, no, look here. This has gone far enough, Jordan. You said Calcutta. Look at the ticket, Ann. To Naples, Italy. Naples? Why, I, I changed my plans. My <coughs> health, you know. I'm beginning to understand. You're the man who had the food taken from that plane. Where is it now, Mr. Norris? I can tell you that. You can prove nothing. Mr. Jordan, I suggest that we talk this over. Yeah, let's do. Oh, uh, by the way, you dropped something in the scuffle, Norris. Is this yours? Why, uh, yes. Just an inhaling tube. My cold, cold, you know. Sure. Only I didn't pick it up here. I found it beside the dead body of Leon Passon down in the warehouse by the Nile. What happened? Passon start getting in your way? I'll never have to answer that. Rocky, look out! His hand went for the bulge in his outside pocket, and I moved in. All I did was shove an old St. Louis trick. His suitcase was on the floor right behind him, and he stumbled back and down hard. I went with him, but I came up first with his gun in my hand. No, no, no. No, no. Uh, Want to look at this, Ann? 22. Just like yours. Then he killed Andy Barker, too. Sure. All right, get up, Norris. Uh, Yes, 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 of course. What are you going to do now, Jordan? I think I'll let you do it. Get over there and pick up the phone. Now, dial 4378. But why? Quick, Norris. But I I don't understand. You will. Just hang on. Police headquarters. Captain Sabaya speaking. The police? Hello, hello. Speak up. Talk to him, Norris. What will I say, Jordan? Just tell him to come and get you. Hello, hello. Who is this? Hello. Captain Sabaya. This is Craig Norris. Continental Savoy Hotel. Come and get me. Sam made it in a hurry. Well, this time he saw a lot of things my way. After Norris was salted away and Sam got the story on Leon Passon, there was still plenty of time to send a launch down the river to intercept the boat making its way toward the Mediterranean. And with some extra help, Ann Helga finally got her cargo through to its rightful destination in Naples. Me... I only got one thing. That's all. It's CBS again at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Jack Moyles plays the title role with tonight's story based on an idea by Bernard Girard and written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman. 
Rocky Jordan is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music by Richard Arant. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Rocky Jordan. Now, we're going to be back tomorrow with another adventure from the Texas Rangers. So don't forget to join us live from 5 p.m. GMT. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page where you'll find extra content and shows and bits and pieces. Check that out. Patreon.com forward slash Brett's All Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's All Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.